everyone. Welcome back to Why You Were Cleaning. Today I have some fall front porch DIYs to share with you. All of these were very simple to put together, so I'm excited to share them in today's video. I hope that you enjoy today's video. If you do, please hit that like button. Please comment down below which of these DIYs you might try to recreate for your own home. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get started. For the first DIY, I am going to be using six of these large black rugs from Dollar Tree. I want to put together a larger rug that I can put underneath my normal porch rug. So I laid all six of these face down and then I used some duct tape to tape along the seams. Now as you can see in the very center of my six rugs here that there are some holes there. I did not trim down these rugs because I knew that those holes were going to be covered up by my normal porch rug and so I didn't trim those down at all. You can trim these rugs down so that all of the corners line up. If you're going to be using a different size rug than what I'm going to be using, you'll just have to adjust this for your own porch. But first off, you just want to tape down all those seams so that they are held together nice and firm and then I did a little dance on that duct tape to hold it in place. Next up, I went and I trimmed off all the rounded corners on the edges of these rugs that you would be able to see out from underneath my regular porch rug. So of course all of this is going to be a little bit different depending on how big you're making this. Mine with the six rugs is pretty big because I have a pretty large porch rug that I picked up from Aldi and you'll be able to see it a little bit better in a minute here. But just trim off those edges so you have a nice straight edge. And then here you can see what that looks like with the edges trimmed off. Again, those little areas in the center there are going to be covered up by my rug, so you won't be able to see that those are there. I am going to be doing a sponge painting stencil pattern on this rug. So first I wanted to create a stencil and I cut a piece of cardboard into this rectangle shape and then I cut some straight edged sponges in half and I'm going to be using three of these halves that look like they're the same size. I didn't measure them to cut them at all and then I just hot glued these down onto my rectangle cardboard piece and these held on really well through the whole project. The hot glue worked fine and I just trimmed it off so it was more of a square shape. Now I'm going to be dipping these sponges into a plate of paint and then I'm going to be creating a pattern on my rug. I am using a regular house paint here. From my experience, house paint works perfectly and stays just fine if you paint it onto a rug and then you use that rug outdoors. I've done house paint on rugs before and it really lasts for a very long time. I am just rotating my stencil back and forth on this rug to recreate the pattern that I was going for and you could recreate really any pattern with your own rug. But here's how mine turned out with this larger rug that I picked up, like I said, from Aldi. And it's about a 16 by 40 inch rug. So I really like the way that the Dollar Tree rugs that I painted are sticking out from underneath it and creating this larger rug look on my front porch. Next, I wanted to put together a large sign that said thankful for my front porch. So I had this scrap board already on hand and this is a 1x12 pine board that I've just had in the garage for a while and it's about 4 feet tall. So I measured out so that each of my letters on this board would be about 5 inches tall so that all of the letters for the word thankful would fit just fine on this board. And I'm just using my ruler to measure out where the center of my board is and then measuring out from there where each of the edges of my letters should go. And I just worked my way down the board just making sure that none of them were taller than five inches so they would all be sure to fit. And I would be sure to use a pencil for this as you're drawing out the letters just in case you don't like the way one looks. It's very easy to just erase it without messing up the way your sign is going to look. 
Next, I use some dark blue house paint to just draw over the pencil lines that I just added to the board. If you don't think that you could freehand these very well, then you could easily pick up some large stencils from Hobby Lobby or Walmart and then just fill in the inside of the stencils instead. I was trying to make this very simple and very cheap to put together, so that's why I just penciled them out and then just did some nice thin lines for my letters. And you could, of course, do any words for on your sign. For the word thankful, it only has the U that has a rounded edge on it. So that's kind of why I chose the word thankful for my sign. Not only because it's fall themed, but also because it didn't have a bunch of rounded letters where I would have to freehand the edges of the letters. So it was very easy to just use the ruler for all of my letters, except for that U I just rounded out the bottom of that. But it makes it easier to be able to draw straight lines along a ruler instead of having to freehand anything. And here you can see how my thankful sign turned out. I think it worked out pretty well for just trying to use a ruler and making this a very simple project. Next, I wanted to try out painting some pumpkins. So I'm going to be doing a baking soda and paint mixture to add onto these pumpkins. The baking soda really thickens up the paint and so it covers the pumpkin a lot better, especially when you're going from an orange pumpkin to a white pumpkin. It really helps you to be able to cover it up a lot faster. And then the baking soda also gives the finished look a nice chalky finish to it. So this first one here, I'm just using some white house paint and I did end up adding two coats of paint to this pumpkin and the two coats covered up that orange pumpkin very well. And you can also use a regular paintbrush or even a small roller if you want to to paint onto these pumpkins. I am using a foam brush here that I got in a pack from Dollar Tree. I just didn't want to have to really worry about washing out the brushes afterwards, so I'm just using a cheap foam brush. And you can see here how it looks with the second coat and it does cover up that orange really well. The color was almost completely covered after just the first coat, but I just wanted to add a second coat to be sure it was covered. And then I also did this navy blue pumpkin and I did this with the same sort of mixture. I added in some baking soda as well to this and I did find that the baking soda does seem to thicken up this house paint a lot better than it does acrylic paints. The house paint is going to last a lot better with these pumpkins being outside as well. So then this one here, I did kind of a greenish blue color. And then this one is a nice light gray color. A Little bit hard to tell in the lighting since I was inside of my garage, but I did end up doing five different colors on these. This green color is the only one that I feel like didn't cover the pumpkin very well and I don't know if it had to do with my mixture or what it was, but it did have a little bit harder time covering the pumpkin. And here's how each of my pumpkins look. I ended up putting a couple of them up on these wood log risers and these have been out for a week now and have lasted really well. Next, I wanted to add a little bit of fall decorations to these wreaths that I've had hanging on my door for a little while now. So I'm going to add some of these pumpkin decorative picks from Dollar Tree and then also some of these cotton stems that I got in some Michael grab bags. The wreaths are also part of Michael's grab bags that I picked up last year after fall. So they are fall wreaths, but I didn't really feel like they were super fall themed. So I wanted to go ahead and just add in some of these different size pumpkins. I added five of the larger pumpkins and then six of the smaller ones. And then I just glued in some of these cotton stems to each of the wreaths as well. I have two front doors on my house now, so these are the only matching wreaths that I have to put up there. So that's why I'm just adding to 
these reads that I already have and it'll be super easy to pull out those glued in pieces later on so that if I want to keep these reads up for some different seasons then they'll still match. So here's how those look with the fall touches added to them. All right, so those are all of the DIYs that I have to share with you in today's video. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit later in the fall to be sharing front porch decorations, but I wasn't able to get the video up last week like I was hoping. So I hope that you still enjoyed it, and thank you all so much for watching today. I'll see you next time. Bye!